Hi, thanks for joining me and Juan for our first solo shot working film or media exploration. So this has been a production. You could see I'm how I'm coordinating the cameras. I've got the GoPro and then now that's the band for connecting to the solo shot. Finally, I'm able to download, upload, sideload, do all the pieces to get to this moment of this video production. It is so cool to be able to do this. And I hope it's helpful because people seem to want some side shots too. All right, so I'm going to start out here. The mounting block is missing right now, so I am going to do a classic mount from the ground, which I never do. And wow, look at how out of practice I am. I see the first bounce, but then to put the hip over the top of the horse better, I think about my days of NETRC and being judged. I'm not sure what number that would have gotten, but I could see if I practice that needs to get better. But the good news was Juan got an A+. I think if a veterinary judge was judging Juan on standing still for a mount, he would have gotten a very high score for that because even in spite of his bungling rider, he was a rock star. And it's very rare that I mount from the ground because of the history of the chiropractor saying it's hard on their withers. So he was really good and that was actually an issue when he came was standing when you got on. So this is pretty cool that he was uh, being the model mounting horse there. All right, so as I go on, I am working on the walk and all the things that I've talked about. Now today was a little bit of a strange day because normally I walk around the ranch and I warm up with a higher degree of fluidity in the horse's body before I start doing the arena work. So it's kind of interesting. I can feel where he's been standing around waiting for me to adjust the camera and do things and this and that. So we're not in our usual flow starting out. And I will be interested to see if that ends up being an issue later or not. But we're kind of starting in a deficiency today. Not terrible, but a deficiency. And I want to credit that to Juan, uh, the circumstances with the camera. Now this is kind of cool, is that there's these places now that I can adjust slow motion and different speeds. So this is going to be fun because you could really see the mechanics of everything there when I'm going slow like that. So little by little, I'm learning how to work with all the pieces and um, hopefully that will help too in terms of sharing the ideas of what's happening. Now, as far as riding, I'm focusing on what you've been watching me do from on the horse is that when I close my leg, follow with my seat and my arms, that I'm riding the horse up into the contact. And then same thing when I go to trot, riding the horse into the contact. Now, I talk a lot about this feel where the horse allows you to ride the body of the horse into the contact. And then from there you create shapes and transitions and all things. Now this video is the first time that I really start addressing the contact issue in, in a really clear way that I haven't done before because I wanted to wait to have his teeth done. So this video is actually the parallel of the video, the last video that I did with him mounted. And so I'm starting now to, in a way, demand more or ask for more that the left and the right side of his jaw stay supple and that the reach for the left and the right side become equal. He has a history of being pretty tight on the left side and whether it's because of the issues that he had the uh, sharp points in the back of his mouth or because of the history of him carrying his toys around or he was born that way, I don't know. All I can say is going forward, now he's had a week since the teeth were done. 
I feel like then the vet had said that the ulcers and everything would start to heal within a very short amount of time. And so now you're dealing with some of the mental fallout from him. So when a horse, what you try to, what I'm trying to do now in the riding is I have ignored kind of, I have a contact, but I don't ask him to be as round because I knew there were, there were things. And I didn't want to have his neck folding up while I was asking him to be round. So I am happy, I have to say, with the length of his neck staying pretty steady. And I can feel that from my seat and my leg, there is a, there's a possibility to create a bridge through his entire neck now. Now, the bouncing around, the wobbling around, so today's kind of day one of let's get this other piece with the contact looking at it. So you're looking at the messiest day as a starting date. And hopefully that will improve. So the wobbling around isn't that I couldn't force him to be on the bit. We're having an ongoing discussion about how the bit is sitting in his mouth. I could force him to be round. That's not a, I mean, it's not my way, but I could do it. And he would be a little broken at the top of his pole and his neck. And then he would kind of hyperflex a little bit and hold the bit with it behind. But I'm trying to work on that he's reaching to the bit and holding the left and the right side. So, and also now, because this has been a good thing that I've been able to work on, is that he stays actively in front of my seat and my leg so that I'm always loading him from the hind leg through his top line, through his neck, into my hand. And so the wobbling around right now is because I'm inviting him to have an easy, even contact and except my seat, my leg, and the circle of the aids now are starting to be hooked up today at a higher level. Now, when I change to right and left, the swing of his left shoulder is staying pretty darn symmetrical, the movement behind, the neck length. So again, I'm, I'm happy with all of this in the evolution. The wobbling around on the contact is going to take time because I'm wanting to give him intellectual choices to be relaxed in the jaw, supple in the pole, and accepting my hand, and that he can carry the bit and be okay with that. I mean, this is a big deal for a riding horse to have a giant piece of metal in their mouth and to have flexibility in their pole, their jaw, their neck, and have this carry this human while going forward doing stuff whether riding on the trail or whatever, to have them comfortable in the circle of the aids. So today again is day one, starting to. Now I'm using some counter bending and bending, counter flexion and counter flexion to start allowing the dots to be hooked up at a higher level. I was able to work on how he responded to the aids to my seat and my leg without him as hooked up, so to speak, or connected. So I'm now using that skill set to also look at how he's accepting the positioning I'm doing in his body to help problem solve how he's accepting what's going on in the contact. Now, that may all sound like absolute nonsense. I totally get that because I'm trying to explain something technically that uh, at this point is based on hopefully biomechanics I'm working on the rhythm, and now I'm giving him a stretch down. So he was working hard to stay, in a way, uphill, into the balance, connected over his back and through his neck. Going to my hand takes an incredible amount of strength and balance. So I want to give him breaks, too. I'm asking that he stay clear in his rhythm when I give him a neck stretch, and that he still stays obedient on my circle of aids, but with his neck longer. So this is new also. I know that he had this in his old tests, but I'm starting now to incorporate more of the whole dressage picture that he has to keep a balance, whether he's connected in the bit or he's in a long stretch. And then, then now I can pick him up again and I start the work with him more concentrated once again.